One of my favorite things to cover on the channel are slicer improvements. They benefit the most users and can make a massive difference in your printer's output with just a few clicks. We haven't highlighted a Prusa slicer version since 2.7 came out a little over a year ago. And with the recent release of 2.9, it felt like the perfect time to jump in and check out its new features. There's a few things in this release I've been waiting for, and thanks to the beauty of open source slicers, even if this isn't your daily driver, with time, many of the features end up getting ported over. So with all that being said, and without further ado, let's get right into today's video. Jumping right in, scarf seams are now available in Prusa Slicer. For anyone not familiar or who hasn't heard of them, this seam type is primarily intended for smooth or cylindrical objects. We've had multiple ways of hiding the visible start and stop point of each layer, or seam as it's called, for years. Thanks to slicer advancements, we can set them to be aligned, randomized, at the rear of the part, or at the nearest corner. For a large number of models, you'll have a sharp corner, somewhere that's a great place to hide the seam. Using a simple cube as an example, the seams are sliced for one of the corners, and when I print the object out, they are virtually invisible. While this is great, we haven't had much of a solution for smooth or cylindrical objects up until recently. I printed out a sphere with the seams set to aligned and randomized. If you aren't facing the seam, everything looks nice. But when we rotate it, we can see the very obvious imperfection spanning from top to bottom. Switching to random, this isn't any better. And you have small, almost zit-like spots all over the part, similar to what you may see with wet filament. This is where scarf seams are a pretty big game changer. Unlike traditional seams, these work by partially overlapping the start and end of a perimeter loop. They can be enabled under Print Settings, Layers and Perimeters, and Advanced. Click the drop-down next to Scarf Joint Placement, and switch it from Nowhere to either Contours or Everywhere. There's a few additional options you can choose from as well, like only enabling them on smooth surfaces, their start height on the current layer, whether you want them to extend around the entire perimeter, their length, their segment length, and if you want them on the inner perimeters as well. My recommendation is to enable them and leave everything as the defaults to begin with. When I did this and reprinted the same cylinder, I was really impressed with the results I got. The seam is not completely gone, but it's a night and day difference from what I got with the standard ones. They also don't protrude, which is really nice for anyone wanting their part to be as smooth as possible. The idea for this seam type in the slicer came from Michael J. Liu and VGDH, and was implemented into Orca Slicer earlier this year, largely by Noisy Fox, an awesome community member that I often see credited in many new Slicer feature releases. Prusa's release does state their implementation of it is original, but that for the most part, it mimics the available functionality found in Orca Slicer. If you're printing objects with smooth faces and haven't already, I highly recommend giving it a try. Next up is one I am really excited to see in Prusa Slicer, and that is multiple beds. This is one of those features I didn't know I needed until it was released in Bamboo Studio, and since then, I have a hard time living without them. The main purpose of this is organizing large or complex projects that won't fit on a single bed. Instead of having to delete and place parts for each segment, you can place them on multiple beds, have them all slice at once, and print out one after the other. It simplifies the printing process and really helps me stay organized when I'm working on larger projects. The implementation of them into Prusa Slicer is independent of Bamboo Studios, and I really like how they've streamlined it. To add a bed to a project, simply drag a part off of your bed, and an additional bed pops up. The beds are placed in a set grid pattern of 3x3, and at least for now, the cap is 9 beds, which is more than enough for most things I've needed. Clicking on any of the beds lets you switch between which one is active. With the addition of multiple beds, the Align button has been duplicated, so there's now a local Align for the active bed, and a global Align that aligns all objects within the entire project. When you switch to the preview window and have multiple beds, there's a nice grid on top that lets you quickly toggle and scrub through each of your sliced plates. From here, you can export the G-code for any single plate, 
or you can click slice all and export all G codes to then export separate files for all of the plates. If you're using Prusa Connect, you can also send one or all from the same window. I'm thrilled to have this in Prusa Slicer and feel like they did a fantastic job with its implementation. With this release, Printables is now directly integrated into Prusa Slicer. We've been able to download and slice files directly from Printables into Prusa Slicer for some time, but with 2.9, there's now a tab built into the slicer that displays the full website. This lets you search and download models all from within the software without needing to open a separate web browser. Depending on the file type uploaded, whether you're logged in and printer compatibility, you'll be able to download, slice, or even directly print files using Prusa Connect. Of course, this is limited to printables and you won't be able to search other sites, but printables has been my repository of choice for some time, and this is a nice convenience upgrade. Next up, we have support for printing with different nozzle diameters within the same print. This is a specific feature to tool changers and multi-tool head printers like IDEX machines. While there's lots of benefits of multi-tool machines like using different materials in the same project and minimizing filament waste by heavily reducing purging, this is the one I have been looking forward to the most. Being able to use a larger diameter nozzle for infill and a smaller for outer perimeters means you can achieve high detail and extremely strong parts while greatly reducing print times. Over the years, we've seen the price point on these machines come down, and as time goes on, I can only imagine there will be even more options available. It's worth noting that this is marked as experimental for now and intended for experienced users, but it's only a matter of time for this to get even more refined. Automatic extrusion with calculation is enabled under print settings and advanced. Automatic infill combing is used to combine the infill of several layers when using a larger nozzle and is found under print settings, infill, automatic infill combination. This feature is one that was inspired by Orca Slicer. The time savings you'll get from this is largely dependent on the size and geometry of the parts you'll be printing. Using an example of some parts I've been running for a project, it's only an hour of savings due to the added time from tool changes and the additional printing of the prime tower. Using a larger model of a medieval castle, the difference is from 3 days and 6 hours to 2 days and 21 hours for a savings of approximately 9 hours. The good news is, with improvements to this and the optimization of a purge tower, I see this gap only increasing with time. Then we have improvements to fuzzy skin. This gives your printed part a bit of texture, which I originally saw mostly used for fun, but have since seen some people using it for adding grip to a model. In Prusa Slicer, this was always applied to the entire perimeter, which meant if used as a modifier, the object was split into several sections, each having its own perimeter. This is another that was improved on by Noisy Fox and Orca Slicer, and the team used that as the basis for their implementation. The result is a much cleaner way of defining fuzzy skin sections using modifiers and the removal of the previous method of splitting the body into multiple perimeter segments. A few other community fuzzy skin improvements were added along with the one I am most excited for which is the fuzzy skin painting tool. With this, you can brush on and easily specify the areas of a model you want it applied to. It works similarly to the paint on supports or painting tool that has been in Prusa Slicer for some time. In addition to these features, there are a handful of other improvements and a host of bug fixes. As always, there are far too many to cover in a video, so I'll have the GitHub release page linked in the description for anyone who wants to take a further look through the changelog. Let me know in the comments what your favorite feature is from this release and if there are any others that you've been hoping get added. And that's been Prusa Slicer 2.9. I hope that you enjoyed this video, and for those using Prusa Slicer, you have an idea of what's new, and it's given you some things to test out in the coming weeks. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments, and I will do my best to answer. On that note, don't forget to like and subscribe for more great videos. We make a video just about every single week, so there's always fresh content coming your way. And if you do want to support the channel further, I'll have links in the description below over to our Patreon, where there are some really awesome rewards. 
Huge thank you to all of our existing Patreon supporters. I appreciate each and every one of you for allowing me to come back every single week and spend more time doing what I love, which is making content for you all to enjoy. On that note, this has been Daniel from ModBot, and I look forward to seeing you guys in my next video. Peace, guys.